Welcome. Today we will be configuring dual WAN connections on RV0 series routers. A wide area network, or WAN, is a network that connects local area networks together. The RV042, RV042G, and RV082 routers support a dual WAN feature that allows both WAN ports to be used at the same time. The dual WAN connections can also be configured as a failover to ensure continuous internet connectivity. These routers also use protocol binding to further optimize the dual WAN configuration. Protocol binding allows certain traffic to be sent through a specific WAN port. This video tutorial explains how to configure dual WAN settings on the RV042, RV082, and RV042G VPN routers. To demonstrate this process, we will use a RV082 router with firmware version 4.2.2.08. In order to use dual WAN connections, the device must be connected to two independent WANs. To do this, plug an Ethernet cable from the first WAN connection to the Internet port on the router. Next, plug another Ethernet cable into the DMZ slash Internet port on the router. By default, the secondary WAN port is configured as a secondary ISP WAN port. This port can also be configured as a DMZ. Log in to the Web Configuration Utility. From the System Summary page, click System Management, Dual WAN. Click the appropriate radio button to choose a WAN load balancing feature. The Smart Link Backup feature ensures continuous WAN connectivity on the router. In this mode, a backup WAN port will take over if the primary one fails. If you want to use this feature, Choose the desired primary WAN port from the drop-down list. The Load Balance option uses both WAN connections at the same time. This option increases the available bandwidth of the router. Click Save to save the settings. To edit the dual WAN settings of a port, click the Configuration button. In the WAN bandwidth area, enter the maximum upload and download bandwidth in kilobits per second. Check with your internet service provider for more information. In the Network Service Detection area, check the Enable Network Service Detection checkbox if you want the router to ping a specific IP address to test for WAN connectivity. In the Retry Count field, enter the number of times the router pings the specific IP address. The default value is 5. Enter the time in seconds the router will wait between pings in the retry timeout field. The default time is 30 seconds. Choose an action to take when a ping test fails from the When Fail drop down list. The Keep System Log and Remove the Connection option gives WAN control to the backup interface. The primary WAN connection takes control back once a connection is re established. The Generate the Error Condition in the System Log option records an error in the connection into the system log, but does not move traffic to the backup WAN interface. Next, configure the IP settings of the location that the router will ping to test for internet connectivity. Check the Default Gateway box to ping the configured default gateway. Check the ISP host checkbox and enter the IP address of the ISP server in the field to ping the ISP server the router is connected to. Check the remote host checkbox and enter an IP address in the field to ping a remote host. Check the DNS lookup host checkbox and enter a domain or host name for the router to ping. Any combination of these options can be used. Next, Configure the protocol binding area. Protocol binding is a feature that is used to send specific traffic through a specific WAN interface. The purpose of this feature is to prioritize two or more types of traffic to optimize network efficiency. This feature is only available if the dual WAN mode is configured as a load balance. From the service drop-down list, choose the type of traffic that will be used for protocol binding. 
Enter the source IP addresses that applies to the selected traffic in the source IP field. Enter the destination IP address that applies to the protocol binding in the destination IP field. To enter a range of IP addresses, enter the first address in the first field and add the last address in the last field. To enter a single address, enter the same address in both fields. Choose the WAN interface you want the traffic to go through in the interface drop-down list. Check the Enable checkbox to enable the traffic rule. Finally, click Add to List to add the rule to the table. To edit a protocol binding entry, select the entry from the table and change the fields above the table. Once finished, click Update. To delete a protocol binding rule, select the entry to delete from the table and click Delete at the bottom of the table. To add a service that is not included in the service drop-down list, click the Service Management button. Enter a name for the service in the Service Name field. Choose the protocol that the service uses from the Protocol drop-down list. TCP forwards all transmission control protocol packets. UDP forwards all user datagram protocol packets and IPv6 forwards all Internet Protocol version 6 traffic. If the protocol is TCP or UDP, enter the ports reserved for the service in the Port Range fields. Click Add to List. The entry is now available in the Service drop-down list. Click Save to save all configurations. Thank you for watching, and for more video tutorials, please visit the Cisco YouTube channel.